When spring comes around, I almost always set up a few of these really cool patio ponds and I never regret it. So let's go through the complete process of how to set one up, do it for pretty inexpensive, and also not have to plug anything in. There's a lot of different choices out there, but I try and stick with the planter pots that don't have a hole in the bottom. If you find one that you really like and it does have a hole, you can always just plug it up with some silicone and a rock. This is the step where you can either save a bunch of money or spend a bunch of money. So stick with your budget and pick a planter that you like the looks of and doesn't cost a bunch. Next up, you're gonna want some sand or maybe even some aquarium gravel. We're gonna use some bricks to help lift some of our plants up, but those are totally optional. And we're gonna be using a really cool solar pump. We'll talk about all these things in a little bit. The last thing pretty much is gonna be the plants. This is highly variable. It's just gonna depend on what you have available nearby like a local garden center. But here's all the materials laid out, not super complicated. Pretty much anybody can do this. I wanna talk a little bit more about the solar pump. This I got a few years ago and it was pretty expensive. I think it was like 60 or $70. But these things have gotten a little bit more inexpensive, so I'll have a link down in the description so you can check one out. Before you start to set your pond up, make sure that it's in a location that doesn't get sun all day long. I put mine on the back patio, it gets the morning sun, and at about 2 or 3 o'clock, it's in the shade. And I think this really helps to cut down on the algae and prevent other problems. Let's finally start to set this thing up. So first of all, we're going to be washing off our sand. And we're using sand because we're eventually going to put some plants in the substrate. We're going to try and kind of set this up like an outdoor aquarium. I like to use sand. You can use gravel. Whatever you have around and is cheaper for you, that totally works. I just hose it out until the water starts to come out clear and then we're ready to dump it in. So I think this ended up being like two, maybe two and a half inches of sand and that's plenty. We don't need a ton in here. It's going to work out perfectly. When that's done, it's time to start putting plants in here. So I think this is a Sagittarius species. It's going to be big and beautiful. We just put it in the pond and then depending on the height of your pond, you might want to raise them up a little bit. That's why we have the bricks. So you can see here, I have the rim of that pot pretty close to the rim of this thing. With this specific plant, I want it to be a little bit lower because it's stemmy towards the bottom. And that way it'll look like it's just coming up out of the water. But other plants like this one, pretty much you want it to be flush with the top. So we raise that up on a brick that helps us out a ton. So this lily, same thing. I think we put it up on a brick here, but we ended up putting it down later. Just trying to balance everything out and get it to look nice. Let's talk more about the solar pump though. So I can't remember what the wattage and the deets are specifically for this one, but I'll have again links down in the description. It'll answer all your questions, but these things I think are pretty crucial, especially for bigger ponds. One like this, you could get away with not having anything and be just fine but I really like to have them. Water movement is always a good thing to have. Fish are gonna appreciate it, especially when this thing gets hot. So before we plug that thing in and get it running, we're gonna fill up our pond now, just using straight tap water. Repositioning that solar pump, we get that thing plugged into the solar panel and we're moving water already. So this thing is only gonna work when the sun is hitting it, keep that in mind. So it's only gonna be on during the daytime. That's okay, that's enough water movement, I'm happy with it. Something you're gonna notice right off the bat, the water's pretty cloudy, this is normal, it's gonna be this way for another day or two, but it will clear up on its own. And besides, we're gonna make the water a little cloudy temporarily anyway with the Fritz nitrifying bacteria. We just treat this thing kinda like an aquarium, it's gonna help us to add fish faster anyway, so why not? Don't forget to add some chemicals to yourself while you're doing this project, guys. Stay caffeinated and make sure you do it with a thermos that has as many fish stickers on it as mine, okay? World's biggest collection of fish stickers. Link down below. Thank you once again for your support. Something that you're gonna wanna pay pretty close attention to, at least in the first stages of your pond setup, is the temperature. We're out at the pond the next day. Water's cleared up a pretty good amount, but it could still get a little clearer. Time will definitely help that and certainly a water change, but let's check the temperature here surface temp of this little pond is about 63 degrees. It's probably a little cooler down at the bottom, but still that's definitely a little too chilly for most aquarium fish. But there are some fish that we use in the aquarium hobby that are perfect for this. You definitely don't just wanna be setting up something like this to keep you know, general aquarium fish because of the temperature and because honestly most fish are hard to see in this type of setting. And the same thing goes for if it's hot. So something like this probably, I mean, maybe it's 10 gallons. It's gonna heat up really hot when it's a super hot day out. We haven't checked it yet, we haven't had that kind of weather, but I'm guessing something like this, surface temps are gonna be close to 80 degrees, if not more, on a super hot day. The more water volume you have, the more stable it's gonna be, and also the height of the water matters, so this is pretty vertical of a setup. That's gonna help a lot at maintaining the temperature and then obviously having stuff 
over the top of this, like the plants growing over as it develops, is gonna help as well. Something like this shallow stock tub that we set up in the past, and we're gonna be setting up here pretty soon, even though it's a bigger water volume, it can definitely really heat up in the sun. So you gotta be careful of that. The deeper, the better, the more stable it's gonna be, and it's probably gonna be better off for your fish. The deeper the pond you set up is also gonna help the fish to hide if you have problems with like raccoons or birds. Even though we don't know the exact temperature profile of our pond, I'm pretty confident on the range that we're gonna experience with this thing, just because I've done this so many times. And because I'm gonna be around for the next few weeks to monitor the situation, I think it's pretty safe for us to go ahead and add some fish to this thing. But before we add the fish, there's one more plant that I wanted to add to our pond to make it kind of more like an aquarium. We're gonna throw in some dwarf sag. So I have a bunch of extra pots here from Aquarium Co-op. Corey was nice enough to send some extra pots to me. So we have some super healthy root systems on these pots, man. I mean, forget the top foliage. A lot of that is gonna transform into the submerged form, right? But it's just gonna help to enhance the look and give the fish a little bit more of a protected feel in that pond. There's a ton of places that sell aquarium plants online, guys. I mean, Corey's is just a really good one if you want the protection of buying plants, because I know that's something that I think everybody thinks about. You know, you don't wanna buy plants and then have them come in melted. That's something that definitely does happen. Aquarium Co-op is definitely a customer first business, and that's why we use their stuff from time to time because they just provide a good experience for the customer. It was at this point that my wife figured out what I was doing and she said that she would like to have some lily pads in her pond. Unfortunately, the lily pads that are at the garden center are just way too big for something like this. But luckily, we have some lily pad type things in our guppy tank in the living room. So looking around here, uh, I was thinking maybe we should try and trick her by putting this in there. But then I remembered what would happen to me if we got busted for that. So, so we decided to investigate this big lily pad that was growing in here. I thought maybe it was a dwarf aquarium lily. It looked kind of weird. Further inspection, I realized that it was from a banana plant that I had put in this tank, which is crazy because I've never had a banana plant survive long enough to produce a leaf like this. Usually they just rot away and they make leaves that kind of grow up. And not some Something that's actually a proper lily pad like this but even this thing was still too big so I decided to pull out one of the tiger lotus plants that we have and we'll see how that does I'm not sure never grown it in a pond before but you never know sometimes they thrive golden white cloud minnows are in my opinion the best little patio fish pond that you could ever add to whatever it is you're creating because of a few different reasons one they're super hardy they can handle the little temperature swings that they're gonna go through and and this might be the best reason is because they're super visible from the top of the water. Hard to demonstrate here in my crazy little potato farm, but you'll see once we put them out in the pond, you'll be able to see these things from a mile away. Let me jump. Uh, hello? Anyway, uh, I think everything's good. So when it comes to selecting the fish that you want to put in your little patio pond, obviously it depends on the size of the thing that you're making. Most of the super stereotypical fish are gonna be, you know, goldfish, koi, and then there's like a handful of fish that we typically see in the aquarium hobby that can work like the golden white cloud minnows, but I don't think there's really a ton to choose from here. Especially when it comes to a small water volume like that thing, we definitely don't wanna put koi, and honestly, I don't even wanna use goldfish. I think the only goldfish you could do in that thing especially long term would be like little feeder fish, but we just don't want to do that. So for me, it's basically just the white cloud minnows. I don't have much more as far as recommendations go. I try and only talk and recommend things that I know, and that's just what I know. I've done cherry barbs in the past because they're also kind of a fish that can sort of take a temperature swing, at least be in a little bit colder of water, but you just can't see them like they're too dark. So that's a big issue for me. I don't want to put stuff in there that I can't like see and enjoy. But don't get me wrong, there's definitely more fish that you can choose. Search up cold water fish. There's a handful of them out there that can work good for you. But the color that the golden white clouds have, I think is the reason why it just makes them superior in my mind.
it's getting dark, so I'm gonna try and do this quick, but some questions you might have about the pond. One, I get them every year. What do you do about mosquitoes? So mosquitoes are an issue, particularly if you don't have any fish in your pond. So because we put those white cloud minnows in there, any mosquito eggs that develop into larvae are just gonna turn into really awesome fish food. If you're planning on keeping one of these without fish, which is something I think a lot of people do, then mosquitoes can be an issue. So one thing that you can do is just get some mosquito dunks. They're a thing that I didn't know existed until I started doing stuff like this and the good people in the comments let me know about them. You can get those at pretty much any garden center or you know, of course on Amazon. So links to as many things as possible for this whole project down below, of course. That should really help you out with the mosquitoes. It should be pretty much a non-issue. So now that you have mosquitoes all figured out, what's something else that you're probably thinking? What about water changes? You might be curious, is this something, if we're kind of treating it like an aquarium, do we need to do that? And the answer is yes and no. It just depends on how your setup is set up. So if you have a bunch of plants, like this relative to the water volume of course with these three pond plants in here we're going to not have any issues with nitrate we're not going to have to do water changes for that reason the only reason why we would do a water change is maybe to remove some of the scum or some of the weird algae that might grow in this thing and again that's something that you can help prevent by putting it in a location that doesn't get the sun all day long so short answer yes we probably will do at least a couple water changes on this thing over the course of the summer but not anything regular like once a week or anything like that if you're going to put a bunch of fish in your pond and maybe you don't have a lot of faith in the plants that you've selected you can always put in some floating plants like some sylvinia or some duckweed if you want to but again it's something that's going to grow like crazy and probably get a little annoying so stick with the sylvinia maybe not the duckweed other than that i'm sure i'm missing some of the super popular questions that i'm going to realize as soon as i post this video but if you think of anything i didn't answer it drop it down in the comments and i'll do my best to get back to you and yeah guys that's pretty much it enjoy your cordless pond i know it does i mean technically it does have a cord like there's a cord attached to the solar panel but you can move that thing anywhere you can stick the solar panel in like a plant pot like the thing that's right behind me i could have put it there something small like this you know it doesn't weigh a ton you can drain a little bit of water out or you can just kick it around to the other side of the yard you can move it around if you're having issues with algae maybe it is getting too much sun you can always move it which is really nice you don't have to be tied to a wall outlet and i just really love that i love the flexibility of something like this so i'm not sure exactly when we're going to do it we need to do it soon here because it's finally kicked off you know being summer here I want to set up that bigger stock pond and then i want to do a couple more of these in some different sizes and with some different looks so something i probably should have mentioned at the very beginning of this video was like this is a 15 20 dollar plastic plant pot super cheap um the plants each were like $15 for the big pond plants. The dwarf sage, we used probably $20 worth, maybe. The sand was another 20 bucks. And you know, the solar pump is really the biggest cost for this whole thing. But again, they're not super, super expensive anymore. And I'll point you in the right direction if that's the route you wanna go. If you don't wanna use the solar pump, you don't have to. Again, something like this, if you're gonna go this size, you don't really need to use anything. I'm not really sure how beneficial it really is at the end of the day. So yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this got you motivated to try something like this. They're super fun. They're super fun. I enjoy them a lot, and I know you will too. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.